just so you all know, I now want to be a monstrumologist and I want to marry Pelinor and if you've read this book, you can see how crazy that is because this is one fucked up man I'm talking about. Hi guys! First thing is first, I have to thank Alyssa from AC Reads because I have a lot of new subscribers and if you're here on her behalf, thank you very much for joining my channel. And Alyssa, thank you because those things you said about me were awesome and amazing and I just, I can't thank you enough. And thank you guys and if you're a new subscriber, welcome to my madness of a channel. And if you're an old subscriber, you know how crazy my channel can get. So, hi! <laughs> so that being said, let's get to it, shall we? Let's review the Monstrumologist. By the way, Pelinor and Monica, I ship it. There's no shame. No shame. I don't know if many of you saw, but I had an epiphany sort of vlog thing put up, and it was about how I could not read any book until I read this book, and I had really high expectations for this book, like really, really high, so I am so glad it didn't let me down. The basic synopsis of this book is that this 12-year-old boy named Will Henry is the reluctant assistant to this man named Eleanor Wathrop, I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, who is a monstrumologist. He came to his scare through really tragic circumstances, which we find later in the book are even more tragic than we originally thought. One night, Will Henry is woken from his sleep, and it will probably be the last sleep, by the way, that he gets in a very long time, because there is a calling at the door. And in comes this man, and he literally brings them a monster right to their doorstep. The monster he brings is called the Anthropophagy. Basically what these are are man-eating geese that are not native to America, where they are. From then on, the book takes a sort of mysterious, gory turn. And when I say gory, I mean gory. The book didn't horrify me, it didn't scare me, and it also didn't like gore me out because I, I, it's very hard to like make me want to gag or anything. But I will warn you, it is gory. Like I'm not crazy enough to think it's not gory. But that's one of the things I personally liked about it because I didn't feel the gore was for free. I felt that it was justified. I know a lot of people might disagree with me, but that's just how I felt. I really loved every single character in this book, even the ones that I wasn't supposed to love. As I said, I, I currently ship myself with Pelinor Wathrop the Monsterologist heavily, heavily so. I loved him. I love how he is a totally broken man. He expresses no real emotion, but because of how we see him, we know that those emotions are there, or at least that's what I got from him. And also, I find him kind of a recluse, a person that has lost everything he's ever loved in a tragic way. And thus, he, he suppresses emotions to avoid that feeling of loss. But you can tell he has it. Will Henry, who is the protagonist in the book, he's a 12-year-old boy. I loved Will Henry. I felt that I knew him. I felt that I wanted him to succeed. I saw him grow. I saw, I don't know, I I think Will Henry was an amazing character. He totally, totally, the way he told things really just made me interested in the story. Those are the two main characters. Now for the secondary characters, I really like Kearns. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me because he is a total dickhead. But I felt that his comic relief in the situation that was like going on was necessary. I felt that we needed a sort of character that kind of made it seem like a game because everything that was going on was so serious that through currents we kind of could chuckle it off. I don't know, I, I don't know if I sympathize with him but not only is he funny because other than being funny and a horrific murderer, just for the record, I at the beginning of the uh, when he first appeared, I thought Kearns was gonna turn out to be a vampire because of the way he spoke, things he said, and things people said about him. I honestly thought that he was gonna turn out to be some kind of supernatural being. But really, nothing in this book is supernatural. They explain it as science. All of it is based on science, and in fact, there is no mention of like. Um, you know, crucifixes or anything like that. There is no mention of that. So I really enjoyed that about the book. Another character that I feel the need to talk about is Robert Morgan. He's the police chief captain thing. I know that he's an annoying character and I know that he's technically 
not a bad guy, not in the way Kearns is, but he is kind of there to trump the action a little bit. And I guess that that could seem bad for some people, but I don't know, I felt that just like we needed the comic relief from Kearns, we also needed a voice of reason. And that's something else. I mean, he reacted like a normal average person would react to the idea that there are these man-eating beasts that will shred you to little pieces and paste you up against the wall. His reaction seemed the most logical. And that's what I enjoyed about him. He seemed the most normal human being out there and and that was good because in a book like this you really need somebody to remind you let's ground you and I sometimes feel that that's missing in a lot of like YA fantasy somebody to say uh no this is unbelievable this is not credible and also let's fucking run for the hills man because there's this ain't right and <laughs> that's basically Morgan's job in the story and I really enjoyed that about him because without him it would have felt a little bit too obviously unrealistic but it would have felt even more so unrealistic instead i liked that the fact that we had kind of a human anchor with uh morgan but the thing i most want to talk about is the writing in this book i am i am what you would call a kind of slow reader i i'm not a person that usually reads more than 50 to 100 pages a day and i read this book which is 447 pages in two days well, no, I like because the uh, I left the four, the last forty pages for this morning because I didn't want to finish it. Um, so I guess it was three days. But really, I was so taken with Yancy's writing that I felt I just kept going through pages and pages. And I remember the first day I read like two hundred and fifty pages just in this book, and I was at work. Okay, so it was really an accomplishment for me and I didn't feel like it was that many pages because his writing was so easy to follow. It was just something that I, it was so much up my alley that, um, I don't know, it was amazing. In fact, it made me really want to read The Fifth Wave because I, I don't know, I just thought if this is the writing that I'm expecting in The Fifth Wave, then I'm totally up for it. I really, really enjoyed Yancey's writing. It's something that is right up my alley. And that's the thing about this book. It, I think that you have to be a horror fanatic or you have to really like this sort of horrific stories for the book to really capture you. If you're someone that doesn't enjoy at all gore, that doesn't like, <laughs> I guess somewhat, I, I mean, that doesn't really like to be scared, then I don't think that this is the book for you. I think this is the book for people that really enjoy this genre, really enjoy this kind of thing. And overall, I wrote it actually on Goodreads. This was right up my alley. I loved it. I adored it. I just, I loved it so much so that I already placed the order for the next two books in the series. And I will be buying the fourth one as soon as it comes out because I am in love. So I guess you can tell by my review that the Monster Bologist gets 5 out of 5 stars from me. Um, and if you're wondering what that means for me, I will link my rating scale down below because 5 out of 5 to me does not mean that I think the book was perfect. Regardless, I enjoyed it so much that I'm still willing to give it a 5 out of 5. And it surpassed The Darkest Minds as my favorite YA fiction of the year so that says a lot from me if you haven't picked up the monster monologist i know halloween is coming and a lot of people really like to read kind of scary stories and scary books for halloween i definitely recommend that you read this for halloween if you're into that kind of stuff and if you just really enjoy gory scary shit without any romance and that was another big one for me it has no romance so if you're really into romance and you like seeing it in your books i don't recommend this but if you're not like me then this is something to check out and i kind of hope that they don't add a romantic element into it later on unless it's me snogging Eleanor. so guys i hope you enjoyed this review again thank you everyone that subscribed to my channel thank you Alyssa, for giving me that wonderful shout out and um i guess i'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!